Hello, this is Dr. Gomez from the University of Texas Health, uh, San Antonio, Department of Radiology section of MSK Imaging and Intervention. And today we're going to do a brief explanation of how and when to use the uncontrolled bone biopsy needle. So the uncontrolled bone biopsy needle is a power needle, so you don't have to use your human power like with other needles, so in that sense a little easier. And we use it for two purposes, either to do a bone biopsy or a bone marrow aspiration. So the uncontrolled comes in two packages, a package for bone biopsy, which comes with a biopsy needle and a coaxial needle to get access to the lesion. And we have the bone marrow aspiration package, which only comes with one needle. That's because when you're doing a bone marrow aspiration, once you pass the cortex, you're already where you need to be, so there's no need to have a coaxial a needle to protect the tract. Uh, so the packages come with uh, the, the drill, which is actually given to you bef after you are gone up, uh, because we need to keep a sterile field, but it includes the needles and a pushing system as well to get it out. And we're going to explain uh, some safety things first. The first things that we're going to explain is that the uncontrolled needle has a diamond tip, as you can see here. That's to pass the cortex, and we call this a diamond tip. So what I want you to know is that it is not threaded. And also, the drill only goes clockwise. It never goes counterclockwise. So it only goes in one direction, and it's a non-threaded needle. So this is for safety reasons, so once you are in the bone, the, the needle is not going to pull you in because it's not threaded. It will only go in or out if you push it. So to use this drill safely, what I tell residents is that once you're in the position and you see it in the CT scan, you start drilling first uh, before pushing or pulling the needle to just try to get a feel of how hard or soft is the bone. There are other needles, which we're going to talk about later, like the Bone Opti, and the Bone Opti actually has an extended drill, and the extended drill of the Bone, op bone Opti needle is threaded. And this is human power, but this one will pull you in because it's threaded, and it's only the extended drill of the Bone Opti needle. But the uncontrolled, because it's power, doesn't have any threaded needles. It's only diamond tip. So. The biopsy needle itself is actually a hollow needle, obviously, because the, the, the piece of bone will be inside there. And you don't see it well, but at the end, there's a bunch of tips, uh, like little teeth, that are pointing inward. And that is to activate the trapping mechanism. It is obvious that if you drill the bone, and then you take it out, and there is no mechanism in place to, to hold that piece of bone that you just drill through, then it's going to stay there. So those little teeth that are pointing inward, when it starts drilling and then you get back, grabs the bone within the needle and you're able to take it out. So what do I do? If I'm not doing a bone marrow aspiration, I just want you to see like if the lesion is within the bone and there is normal bone between the cortex and the lesion, I use the bone uh, biopsy needle. And the reason I do that is that I go in with the coaxial needle, get to the beginning of the lesion, and then with the biopsy needle, I do the sample. That's what I do. Now sometimes, if the lesion extends all the way to the cortex, I will use a bone marrow aspiration needle to get to the lesion, because once you hit the bone, you're in the lesion, so there is no need to use a coaxial. Now you need to talk this with your orthopedic oncologist, because some orthopedic oncologists are very peculiar about trying to protect the tract. And in a coaxial needle, if you do a biopsy of a lesion, when you take it out, it's protected so you won't get seeding through the tract. And that is important too. So if there is a lesion within the bone, most of the people, the great majority of them, will use a coaxial needle to get in just because of ease of, of how do you do the biopsy and also to protect the tract from seeding. So when you're presented with a biopsy, you're gonna get all gone up and sterile, and the, the needles, be, be, they come in a package, 
and you will open it up and it comes in a this is like a holder for it and I mean I cut it out but there is a sterile pl plastic and the tech will put the needle to so hear a click and then the plastic you cover it without touching the drill to keep it sterile and then you roll it up as, as any way you want it uh, so it's comfortable for you to use so you're going to end up with the drill and this adapter that is what clicks the needle so when you're going to click the needle it's, it's, it's actually a good idea to practice before um, you actually do the procedure um, it should click and once it clicks you can drill and to take this out it, if you try to pull it out it's not going to come out you have to pull this adapter back here back and then you release it otherwise it will come out with you and you're kind of going to waste all the effort that you do trying to get into that specific lesion uh, so what you do first is you do a CT scan, right? And in that CT scan, you, you identify the lesion and say, okay, I'm going to do this. This is the way I'm going to go. I'm gonna, not going to hit any nerves and major vasculature, and you find a safe passage to the, to the lesion that you want. So with the coaxial needle, you're going to have to do a nick in the skin because these needles are, are, are rather big. And once you make a small nick in the skin, you put the needle in until you kind of reach the cortex of the bone. Um, the coaxial needle, right, is hollow and it has the diamond tip in the, in the needle that goes inside, which is the, the one that is gonna break through the cortex. Now, this will screw in and it has to be completely tight for it to click here. A lot of the times when you're starting to do these things, you it doesn't click and most of the time it's because the needle is not completely screwing safely so you need to hear that click hear that click and then again once you're in the bone so suppose this is the bone right you you start drilling first and then after you gauge how hard is the bone or soft then you try to push forward push forward push forward and pushing forward all right and now, once I pass the cortex, remember, you have to pull this, and then you release. If you don't do that, you're gonna take the needle outside with it. So, if you do a CT scan, you wanna make sure that the diamond tip is past the cortex. So, suppose you completely drill all the way to the beginning of the lesion, so you're gonna take this inside needle out, because it's already the needle is already anchoring the cortex. And then you're going to take the biopsy needle to do the biopsy. Now, it has three markings, and between each marking is a centimeter. There's some recommendations I have for you. Um, if it's a very, very, very sclerotic lesion that is very hard, I would not do more than one centimeter biopsy because it's going to be really, really difficult for you to take it out of the needle, uh, to push it out. And that's a, that's a problem that a lot of us have to deal with. So. If the bone is very soft, I usually take one, 1.5 centimeter uh, biopsy. But if it's very sclerotic, I usually even do, uh, you know, half a centimeter biopsy and then I go again and do another half, just for the ease of taking it out. So you're in the beginning of the needle. So you put the biopsy needle, right? And then what you do is the same again, right? You click it and then what you're gonna do you can't hold the ne you can't you can't hold the coaxial needle, but you cannot hold the biopsy needle because it's going to turn, and it's going to eat up your glove. So you just the coaxial needle will be safe because it's not going to turn. But on the first one, you 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 don't grab the needle because I've seen a lot of people that they grab the needle to try to keep it in place, and when they start uh, drilling, it it gets caught in the glove and it becomes a mess. Uh, but with the coaxial, you hold it in place, and again you drill, make sure you know the consistency, and then you go in one centimeter and then again you take the drill out you do a CT scan or imaging to make sure that you're in the right place and to have proof that the needle just went through the lesion once you do that you go back and you click again and then you start drilling and the on control system is supposed to activate the trapping mechanism in a swift forward and backward movement sometimes we don't have space 
But if you have, I would just start drilling, push forward one or two millimeters, and then in a swift movement, you take it out completely, right? And a piece of bone should be inside the needle. And of course you take it out. And in the bone marrow system, you'll have an adapter that will go from, from reverse, uh, from, from the tip back, and that's to protect the integrity of the bone. But in the biopsy needle, you just go inside the needle with the pusher, there is a pusher. It has a blunted tip and you go in and then at the end you're going to feel the pressure and usually I put in the table wherever I'm going to put it and then as I push it I put my hand to protect it because sometimes the bone piece is in so much pressure that when you push it a lot uh, it flies away and it happens a lot of the time so usually most of the people just cover it with the hand and then push it to try to get the sample out. And then you put it on formalin or, uh, or saline or whatever it is that you're gonna do. And you can go, if you have still have more lesion, you can go again and do another centimeter. Uh, once the coaxial is in, you can't change the direction of it, so you have to be pretty sure that you're in the right place. Um, and then, of course, you take all the needle out and then you just hold pressure and that's all it. Uh, I do my bone biopsies with moderate sedation. I think it's a good thing, uh, but not only because it hurts, but because the sound of the drill, it kind of be nerve wracking for the patient. So, uh, you know, if the patient can get sedation, I usually give sedation to the patient. So that is for the bone opti. Uh, sorry, the on control system. We're gonna talk about the bone opti in the next uh, small tutorial. And thank you for listening.